Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 630. We're going to talk about industrial 3000 series, and we're going to focus on access control policy enabling uh, SCADA uh, application visibility. So the box is already added to FMC. That's no different than any other uh, item that you would, or any other device that you would add in the past. What we're going to do here, though, is we're going to create a new policy. So we'll give it a name. SCADA detection policy, sounds good enough. We'll add the device to the policy and the default policy is gonna be network discovery. Now remember, when you're in an operational environment, there's tremendous risk in actively blocking anything. So if you ever get to the blocking stage, most likely you got there through um, uh, either uh, policies that are, are, are wide open and that you're learning the environment. Uh, but you're certainly not dropping in line or anything like that. So from here, what we'll do is we'll create a access um, control rule in that access control policy. And here we're going to do inside to outside, and then we're going to do outside to inside. And these are zones. These zones were pre-configured. Uh, lots of videos on this, uh, certainly. And this will be one video of uh, a series of two. Um, the first one, like I said, will be focused on access control policy and enabling uh, the SCADA uh, applications and protocol. Uh, and the next one's going to be really focused on um, IPS and do some additional um, uh, signature creation. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at applications. You can see there's tremendous amount of applications available within Firepower. Um, and they got them categorized based on risks, business relevance, uh, types, you know, you get categories, and then we also tag. And, and that's what we're looking for here. We're going to actually grab uh, SCADA protocol tagged. And from there, uh, there'll be a list of protocols. Um, in your environment, you'd be very specific in what you're actually leveraging. Um, I, sorry, when I say protocols, I mean applications themselves, right? It's much more than just the protocol. Um, so you can see here, there's you know uh, quite a few, right? There's uh, BACnet, uh, DMP3, uh, Goose, uh, Modbus. Um, in, in our case, like I said, we're just gonna carry over all SCADA protocols. You could add inspection. We'll pr probably get there in the next video. Um, and then logging. Now logging here, because of the environment, I'm gonna put logging for both beginning and end. And typically, for uh, a block policy, it's going to be log at beginning because there is no end of connection. It's terminated and allow typically at the end, right, of the connection because you want uh, it logged at that point. Here we're just going to log both just in case we can see anything uh, in regards to connection logging uh, would be valuable in an uh, SCADA environment. Um, the other thing too is this is available on dCloud. So anybody that wants to leverage or go through these uh, labs can certainly ask their uh, local Cisco rep uh, to get access to these uh, lab environments. So we'll add that policy and we'll save. And from here, we're going to go to uh, network analysis and intrusion policies. And we're going to edit this policy. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie it to this access control policy. And the goal here is that we will enable a couple of preprocessors, um, DMP3 and Modbus. Um, and we'll do us a couple additional tweaks as well. You can see a little message over at the right that's talking about, you know, we're not seeing any packets on those interfaces. Um, that's just letting you know um, at this point there's no flow going through that box. And that's typical at least at, at this stage of the game. All right, so once we're here, what we can do is drop down to My Changes. And here we have the ability to do app application layer preprocessors. We can enable or inherit or disable, right? Um, SCADA preprocessors, which are uh, not enabled by default. 
and you can see Modbus, DMP3, and SIP. We're just going to enable Modbus and DMP3. And we're also going to do uh, inline normalization for TCP stream configuration. So we are going to enable that one as well. And we're going to edit that one to add in the actual uh, ports that are leveraged by Modbus and DMP3. And so those ports are for Modbus, it's um, 502. And for um, DMP3, it's going to be 2000. And I'm just putting them in order here of uh, for what you would see them in uh, typically if they were uh, done in order. Doesn't doesn't have to be, but um, that's what I'm doing anyway. All right, so cool. Uh, that's done. We'll go back. Uh, actually, click the back button, and then once we do that, we're going to save out this configuration. Once we save this out um, and commit those changes, now we can apply it to our access control policy. Now that base policy, you might have noticed it was balanced security and connectivity. Now typically when you're adding a network uh, analysis uh, policy, you typically fall in line with what your IPS is. So if you picked uh, balanced uh, connectivity and security, right or uh, connectivity over security or security over connectivity typically these would match when you do your network uh, analysis policy all right so now we went back to access control policy and what we're going to do here is we're going to edit that policy and we'll go back to advanced and you've seen this already but now we're actually going to select Instead of the default network analysis policy, we're gonna drop that down to that tweaked policy that we've just created, right? And we'll save that out. And from here, what we're gonna do is deploy. A quick check here inside outside that all looks good and we'll deploy while that's deploying um, what we'll do is we'll connect to our um, both SCADA master and SCADA slave. And what we'll do is we'll ping each other's box uh, just to make sure that we're getting from the inside to the outside, right? Master slave is on the outside, master, or sorry, <laughs> sorry, SCADA master is on the, the outside and SCADA slave is on the inside. And remember that policy was both, right? It was allow both inside to outside, outside to inside. There's nothing really magical outside of the protocols only are the ones that are being allowed. And then the default policy, if you recall, was actually network discovery. So it would still allow uh, packets to pass, in this case, ICMP or ping, right? So again, this is the master, or SCADA master. It is on the outside. And we're pinging the uh, SCADA slave on the inside. All right, so I'll quickly uh, go into the next box. And that happened um, pretty quick, right? Uh, we've built that policy within a few minutes. Uh, and we were able to ping uh, from uh, the outside to inside and now inside to outside. So we know that we've got communications uh, through the box working as expected. So the next thing that we're going to do is on the Modbus slave, which we are currently on, we are going to, or the SCADA slave, um, what we're going to do is we're going to listen, and I'm using Modbus SCADA OT interchangeably here, right? Um, obviously, they could mean a lot of other things, right? Uh, except for Modbus means Modbus, right? But OT can mean a variety of different protocols within the operational environment. 
um, and SCADA itself is a, uh, a system, right? Um, so let's go back to the master and then from master what we're going to do is we're going to run a couple of commands and basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect and then we're going to read coils right and this is going to connect to the slave and then we're going to disconnect connect and then we're going to do a couple other commands here so we'll do um, from here we'll do um, write uh, single coil And then we'll disconnect. And actually, let's just jump over to the other box. And yeah, so we can see some uh, entries here. And I just want to make sure the communication is going from that, that master right from the outside in into the inside using the Modbus uh, protocol so disconnect here we'll connect again and we'll run a couple more right read discrete uh, maybe write, write single register and then write multiple register right but the goal here is to create some noise or traffic right so that we can actually see it on firepower uh, in our connection event logging Okay, write multiple registers, disconnect. Okay, so we've run a couple of these uh, commands, right? From the master to the slave. Now, when we go back to firepower and we go into connection or uh, and, and analysis connection events, uh, we should be able to see uh, that we've not only have traffic traversing the box, but also that we've been able to identify the actual application being used. Remember too, the ISA 3000 is a hardware um, specific appliance that can be deployed within a SCADA environment, right? Very specific uh, hardware elements that are included. So you can see here very quickly, we saw Modbus uh, as the application. We also see uh, table events that, that allows you to dig a little bit deeper. And that's it. Easy peasy.